of Valeria's children. The Valerians learned one deplorable thing from the Giscari, slavery. The Giscari whom they conquered were the first to thus be enslaved, but not the last. The burning mountains of the Fourteen Flames were rich with ore, and the Valerians hungered for it. Copper and tin for the bronze of their weapons and monuments, later iron for the steel of their legendary blades, and always gold and silver to pay for it all. None can say how many perished toiling in the Valerian mines, but the number was so large as to surely defy comprehension. As Valeria grew, its need for ore increased, which led to ever more conquests to keep the mines stocked with slaves. The Valerians expanded in all directions, stretching out east beyond the Gascari cities and west to the very shores of Essos, where even the Gascari had not made inroads. It was this first bursting forth of the new empire that was of paramount importance to Westeros and the future Seven Kingdoms. As Valeria sought to conquer more and more lands and peoples, some fled for safety, retreating before the Valerian tide. On the shores of Essos, the Valerians raised cities, which we know today as the Free Cities. Their origins were diverse. Cohor and Norvos were founded following religious schisms. Others, such as Old Volantis and Lys, were trading colonies, first and foremost, founded by wealthy merchants and nobles who purchased the right to rule themselves as clients of the freehold rather than subjects. These cities chose their own leaders rather than receiving archons dispatched from Valyria, often on dragonback, to oversee them. It is claimed in some histories that Pentos and Larath were of a third type, cities already extant before the Valyrians came, whose rulers paid homage to Valyria and thus retained their right to native rule. In these cities, what influx of Valyrian blood there was came from migrants from the freehold or political marriages used to better bind the cities to Valyria. Yet most of the histories that recount this take as their source Gesio Horatis's Before the Dragons. Horatis was himself from Pentos, and at the time, Volantis was threatening to retore the Valyrian Empire under its control. So the notion of an independent Pentos, with origins distinct from Valyria, was a most politic convenience. However, it is clear that Bravos is unique among all three cities, as it was founded not by the will of the Freehold, nor by its citizens, but instead by its slaves. According to the tale of the Bravosi, a huge slaver fleet that had been out collecting tributes in human flesh from the lands of the summer and jade seas became victim to a slave uprising instead. The success of this uprising was doubtless dependent on the fact that the Valyrians were wont to use slaves as oarsmen and even sailors, and that these men then joined the uprising. Seizing control of the fleet, but realising there was no place nearby to hide from the freehold, the slaves instead elected to seek out some land far from Valyria and its subjects, and founded their own city in hiding. Legend says that the Moonsingers prophesied that the fleet must travel far north to a forlorn corner of Essos, a place of mudflats and brackish water and fogs. There, the slaves first laid the foundation of their city. For centuries, the Bravosi remained hidden from the world in their remote lagoon, and even after it unveiled itself, Bravos continued to be known as the secret city. The Bravosi were a people who were no people, Scores of races, a hundred tongues, and hundreds of gods. All they had in common was the Valyrian tongue that formed the common trade language of Essos, and the fact that they were now free where they had once been slaves. The moon singers were honoured for leading them to their city, but the wisest among the free slaves determined that to unite a flay themselves, they must accept all the gods the slaves had brought with them, holding none higher than any other. In short, the names and numbers of the people who fell to Valyria are unknown to us today. What records the Valyrians kept of the conquest were largely destroyed by the doom, and few if any of these people documented their own histories in such a way that survived the Freehold's dominion. A few, such as the Roinar, lasted against the tide for centuries, or even millennia. The Roinar, who founded great cities along the Rhoyne, were said to be the first to learn the art of iron-making. Also, the Confederation of Cities, later called the Kingdom of Sarno, survived the Valyrian expansion thanks to the great plain that separated one from the other. Only for that plain and the people who occupied it, the Dothraki horse lords, to be the source of Sarnor's downfall after the doom. And those who would not be slaves but were unable to withstand the might of Valyria fled. Many failed and were forgotten, but one people, tall and fair haired, made courageous and indomitable by their faith, succeeded in their escape from Valyria. And those men were the Andals. <laughs>